Welcome to this YSL Report Builder 2016 tutorial. In this video, we'll take a quick look at filtering tables and datasets in a report. We'll begin with a quick reminder of how to apply a filter to the query of a dataset in the Query Builder tool. And then we'll move on and look at how you can apply filters to individual tables that belong to a report. We'll show you some simple number filters. We'll talk about text filters and how to apply wildcard characters. And then a couple of hints about how you can type in date formats appropriately to work with date filters. In the final part of the video, we'll take a quick look at how you can apply filters to a data set, just in case you don't have the option to apply filters to the underlying query. So let's get started. To get started, I've created a blank report in Report Builder, and next I'm going to create a data source which connects to the YSL Movies database. Again, if you haven't done that already, you can learn how to install that database using a video that we've prepared, and in the description of that video we have a link that you can use to download a script to help you with that installation. Assuming you've reached that point already, we can create a new data source in the report by right-clicking Data Sources and choosing Add Data Source. If you already have a shared data source from a previous video in this playlist, feel free to use that one, it will be exactly the same. In case you haven't done that, I'm going to create a new data source, I'll give it a sensible name called Movies, I'll use a connection embedded in the report, I can click the build button to help build up my connection string, I'll type in my server name dot backslash SQL2016 training, and then I can select my Movies database from the list. We have another video in the playlist which explains a little bit more in detail how this works, so feel free to reference that video if you need a bit more help with this. I'll click OK a couple of times, and now I'm ready to start building my data set. My aim in this report is to create two separate tables, one which displays a list of films that have won Oscars, and another table which displays a list of films which haven't won any Oscars. We've accomplished this in a previous video by creating two separate data sets, each with a filter returning only the films needed for that particular table, so one that shows Oscar winning films and one that shows films which didn't win any Oscars. In this report, what I'd like to do is have the convenience of using one single data set which feeds the results for multiple different items in the report. So what I'm going to do is right click on my movie's data source and choose to add a data set to it. I'm going to call the data set films and then I'm going to use the Query Designer just to quickly select some fields from the Film table. I can expand the Tables folder, expand the Film table, select Title, Release Date, Runtime Minutes and Oscar Wins. In the earlier video, this is where we would have applied our filter to choose films that have won an Oscar, or at least one Oscar, or films that haven't won any Oscars by adding a filter, but I want to avoid that in this particular case. So all I'm going to do now is click OK, Click OK again, and now I'm ready to start building the first table. I'll begin by right-clicking and deleting the default report title text box. I can right-click and delete that. And then I can insert a new table by right-clicking into the report body, Insert, Table. I'll just drag that up to the top left-hand corner, and then I'll assign the four fields that I've selected. So I'm going to go to Title, Release Date, Runtime Minutes, and then I can drag Oscar Wins from the datasets list into my table, making sure it gets attached to the right hand side of the table. A little bit of tidying up, I'm going to change the column width for the title, as I know some of those film titles are quite long. I'm going to edit the runtime column header so that it just says runtime rather than runtime in minutes. I'm going to apply a format to the release date text box by right clicking on it and choosing text box properties. From the number tab, I can choose to view a date format, and I'm going to pick one that is unambiguous, one that shows the name of the month, or at least a short name for the month, this one here, so I can see the uh, Jan, Feb, Ma, etc. If I click OK, I'm then going to apply a bit of basic formatting to the header row by changing the, uh, the background colour briefly, and then maybe making the font bold. And I'll also insert a new header row for the table, so I can right click next to the existing header row, insert a row above, I can select and then merge those four cells together, and this table is going to show me the list of Oscar winners, so I'm going to type in a very quick title of Oscar winning films. I can then maybe change the formatting of that cell by making its background colour a bit darker, and maybe make the font colour a bit lighter, and then perhaps centre that text in the cell. And there we go, there's the basic table setup. 
Let's just check that the table returns a sensible set of results. So if we run the report, we can preview it and then we can see that it's returning a list of all of the films, so films which have won at least one Oscar and films which haven't won any. What I'd like to do next then, of course, is filter the results of this table to exclude the ones where the Oscar wins is zero. Back into the design view, I can do this by using the Tablix properties or Tablix properties dialog box. I'm never quite sure how to pronounce it. To do this, I can select a single cell within the table and then I can right click on any of the grey boxes surrounding the left or the top of the table and then choose to view the Tablix or Tablix properties. I'll find there's a filters page on this dialog box and if I click on that, I can then begin adding my filters. It's worth mentioning there's a slightly quicker way to get to this dialog box if I cancel from the dialog box itself and then make sure that I have the table selected by dragging a box which partially encloses it. I can find in the properties window there's a filters section and if I click on that property I can choose the ellipsis, the dot 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 button and when I do that I'm launched directly into the Tablix properties filters page. Now I can begin adding my filter by first of all clicking the add button at the top of this list. Then I need to select a field to which I want to apply my filter from the drop down list called expression. If I choose Oscar wins, you may notice the option on the right hand side, which indicates that column's data type changes automatically and becomes deactivated. For fields that are directly selected from a query from a table in the database, the data set is determined already automatically. You can't change it. Now I want to change the operator. I want to find any films whose Oscar wins is greater than zero. So from the drop down list next to operator, I can choose the greater than symbol. Once I've done that, I can enter a value into the value box. And in this case, I'll enter the value of zero. Then I can click OK. And then if I run the report this time, I'll find my table has significantly fewer results in it. All the films that didn't win any Oscars have now been excluded. Creating the second table which displays the non-Oscar winning films now is pretty straightforward. If I switch back to the design view, I can start by selecting the table I've just created by dragging a box which partially encloses it, and then I can press Ctrl and C to copy, followed by Ctrl and V to paste. I'll move the pasted version of the table towards the right hand side of the original one, and I'll leave a small gap so I can see where one table ends and the next begins. I can edit the title of that table so that it says non Oscar winning films. And then what I'd like to do is alter the filter that I've already applied to that table. As I can see these gray boxes around the outside of the table, I can right click on one of them and choose Tablix or Tablix properties. I can then switch to the filters page. And then all I need to do is change the operator of the filter that already exists. So that that's back to equals. So where the Oscar wins is equal to zero. At that point, if I click OK, and then I run the report again, I'll see two separate lists of films, one with Oscar winners and one with non-Oscar winners. We can add multiple filters to a table fairly easily as well. As it was Star Wars Day fairly recently, May the 4th, let's add a filter to the film title, which shows only films which contain the word star. Let's head back to the design view and then I'll start with the Oscar winning films. I'll select the table and then use the filters property on the properties window to launch directly into the filters page of the properties dialog box. I can add a new filter and this time I'm going to choose to filter based on the title column. I don't want to find films whose title is equal to the word star. I want to find films whose title is like a particular pattern of text, anything that contains the word star. To make this work, I need to use wildcard characters surrounding my text. Wildcard characters in Report Builder are slightly different to the ones you may be familiar with from SQL. So for example, if I wanted to find films whose title begins with the word star, in SQL I would write star followed by a percentage symbol. But in Report Builder, the percentage symbol is replaced with an asterisk or a star. So star, star. That would find for me any films whose title begins with star. I could put another star or another asterisk at the beginning of the string so that it finds any films containing the word star. So the asterisk is a wildcard character which represents any number of any characters, including no characters at all. So this will find anything that begins with star or ends with star or contains the word star anywhere in it. If I do that and I click OK, 
I can then zoom back out again and then run the report. And I should find that the first table has been filtered to show only those films containing the word star. I'd like to replicate that for the second table and to avoid copying and pasting it again, what I'm going to do is just apply that manually. So back in the design view, I can switch back to the non Oscar winning films table and then I can select that table, use the filters option in the properties window to launch straight into this page of the dialogue, add a new filter, choose to view the title or choose to use the title column, change the operator to like, and then type in the same string as I did earlier. So an asterisk followed by the word star followed by another asterisk. At that point I can click OK and then run the report again. And now both tables have been filtered for those films containing the word star. Now I'd like to filter both tables to show only those films released since the year 2000. So we'll exclude all the really old films from this list. To do that, I need to apply a filter to a date field. And there's a couple of approaches you can use to doing that. Back in the design view, let's start with the Oscar winning films table. If I select that table, I can then go back to the filters property and launch the filters dialog box. I can then add a new filter. I can choose the release date field this time, noticing that the data type is set to date time. And then I want to find any films whose release date is on or after the 1st of January 2000. So I'm going to use the greater than or equal to operator. Having done that, I can type in the value for the date in a variety of accepted date formats. One simple common one would be to say the uh, number of the day of, uh, day of the month, 01, followed by a forward slash, followed by the month of the year, or vice versa if you're in the US, of course, month followed by day, as it's the first of the first, it makes no difference, followed by another forward slash, and then the year 2000. I can click OK at that point, and then let's zoom back out again. And I want to apply a filter to the non Oscar winning films table next. So I can select that table, head back to the filters page, and then click the dot 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 button, and then click the add button, choose the release date field, greater than or equal to. This time, what if the date I was using was uh, was ambiguous? What it would what if it was uh, the second of the first? If I typed in 02 forward slash 01, is that 2nd of January or is that February the 1st? Who knows? Who cares? We can avoid that completely by writing in our date format in a less ambiguous way. Let's write in the number one for the number of the day of the month and then a short code for the month of the year, Jan, followed by another space and then the year in four digits. That's uh, impossible to misinterpret, isn't it? We can't misinterpret the word Jan. That must mean January. And that's exactly how the filter will be treated. So if I zoom back out again and then click OK, if we run the report, we'll see that both tables have been filtered to show only those films released since the 1st of January 2000. For the final filter, I'd like to restrict the list to showing only those films whose runtime is between 120 and 130 minutes. And again, just like with dates, there's a couple of approaches to doing this. Back in the design view, I'll show you the first technique using the Oscar winning films table. So I can select that, head back to the filters page of the properties dialog box, and then I can add a new filter. So I'm going to add a filter, which will use the runtime minutes field. I can then choose a filter that is greater than or equal to 120. I can then add a second filter that will also show films whose runtime minutes is less than or equal to 130. So those are the two filters that will find the value that falls, any value which falls between those two. The reason this works is because filters that you add to a table in this dialog box are all applied using the AND operator. So for a film to be displayed is Oscar wins must be greater than zero and its title must contain the word star and it must have been released and so on and so on and so on. There is a slightly shorter, easier, more succinct way of seeing values which fall between two thresholds. If I click OK on the first dialog, I'm going to apply the same filter in a slightly different way to the non Oscar winning films table. So having selected that, I can go back to the filters tool, open that page of the dialog and then add a single filter using the runtime minutes field and change the operator to say between. 
Once I've done that, I can enter the min and max values that I'm looking for in one single filter. So I can say 120 followed by 130, and that will achieve the same result as the two separate filters I added to the previous table. Once I've done that, I can click OK, and then I can run the report. And I can see now that both tables have been filtered to showing only those films with, between those two thresholds. Now that we've successfully eliminated all of the Star Wars films from our Star Wars Day example, let's look at removing those filters that we've added. Back in the design view, I'm just going to select the non Oscar winning films table and use the filters option of the dialog box to remove each of the filters apart from the original one. So to remove filters, I can click on each one in turn, followed by clicking delete and go through the list until I'm left with only the Oscar wins equals zero. I can then click OK and then do the same thing for the Oscar winning films table. So I can go back to the filters page of the dialog box and select each of the filters that I've added from the bottom upwards so that I'm left with a filter that's only those films with an Oscar wins value of greater than zero. The reason I've done this is because every, every other filter apart from that original one, I wanted to apply to both tables and it was a bit tedious to apply it to each table in turn. Now, of course, the easiest way to make sure that I only see films with the word star in them or release between certain dates or any other filter, if I want that to affect every object in the report, I could apply the filter in the original query designer. However, you don't always have the opportunity to do that. If your query was populated using, for instance, a stored procedure rather than just a simple ad hoc query, you can't simply apply a filter to the query itself in this tool. So rather than trying to filter in the underlying query, what you could do instead is apply a filter to the data set once it's reached the report. So if I look at the data set properties dialog box, and again, just to show you that, if I right click on the film's data set and choose data set properties, there's a filters page on this dialog box, which behaves in exactly the same way as the ones we've been using for the tables. The difference is that any filter I apply here will affect all of the objects which use that data set in the report. So as a quick simple example, we can add a new filter which will look at the film title and we can use the like operator and then we can find any films whose title contains the word star by typing in asterisk star asterisk. Once I've done that, I can click OK. And then if I run the report again, although I've removed virtually all of the filters from these two tables, because they both use the same data set, they now will show all the films containing the word star. So there we go. There's some basic techniques you can use to apply filters to both tables and data sets in a report. Lots of those techniques will come in handy for other types of report items, such as charts. So we'll see those again later on in the series when we start talking about different report items. For now, thanks for watching. See you next time.